Hello everyone, Genesis here with another Genesis Tips and Tricks video. Today I'll be looking at some of my free-for-all gameplay on the map Adrift. Now, off the start here, I want to say this is the Global Championship Playlist, which means you will see my ordinance be grenades. However, it's free-for-all gameplay, first person at 25 kills wins, or 250 points. Now, off the spawn here, I'm going to be going for the Railgun, which spawns on the side ramp here. A lot of the cods I'll be using are Purple Forest. Okay, this is Purple Forest. You have per the Purple Forest Ridge, or just uh, Bottom Ridge, basically. This whole ramp area of the map. Then you have Ring 3, Ring 2, which is the center ring area. And then, of course, Ring 1, or Bottom Center. You can say Middle Center, Bottom Center, or Top Center. It really doesn't matter. This is Gray Cave, right? This whole area right here is Gray Cave. This is called Magic Tree, all right? The reason why it's called Magic Tree is because it has a little lift that goes up and it sparkles and everything of that nature. So it's called Magic Tree. This is back center. You could also call this top yellow. Here the sniper spawns there in the free-for-all. So off the spawn here, there's a lot of stuff that happens in the first two minutes of this game. And guys, I apologize, I'm gonna do this You'll run this through you as best I can. Off the spawn here, I try to grab the railgun, not initiating direct contact with these players, staying back, cleaning up the one shots. I don't make a very good call here going into ring two of the map from Purple Forest into ring two. There is a ton of dots on my radar. And right here, what most players would do is that they would try to find someone on their radar and just kill them. They wouldn't listen to the sounds at all of the game. And I hear someone, again, in front of me, the explosion that just occurred in front of me. I know that a battle just initiated and took place between two players, so one of them is likely to be weak. So I pull up my battle rifle, and I find the weak guy and clean him up with a nice headshot there. I back away from Ring 2 into the side purple forest, because I don't want to get annihilated from random angles. I cancel my railgun shot by releasing the trigger before the little bars reach the top of the reticle. Hit that guy with a nice railgun across the map, weaken his opponent, get the tri double kill, triple kill, and again, the overkill. Almost get a kill tackle here, but my railgun is not reloaded. I'm using dexterity with shielding, frag grenade, arctic battle rifle skin, and the bolt shot. Notice how I canceled that railgun shot. Pull the trigger, then thruster pack, then switch weapons and thruster pack. As long as you switch weapons before the railgun fires, you won't actually fire the railgun, which is really nice. A lot of people don't know about that. They end up wasting their railgun. I'm going to hang back here and make sure not to die. I do have a 5 kill lead, so I can I can actually do that. This guy ends up missing at least two bolt shots on me throughout the game. Really good use of the assault rifle here for the killing frenzy. I'm not calling down my nades just yet, because there's no need to. Right here, I really needed to reload before I jumped out and did that. I needed to have reloaded for a while. How did I know that both those players were dead? Well, if you watch my radar, both immediately disappear and I get an assist which means at least one of them died and I'm going to bet that the other guy didn't immediately crouch. I do not see that sniper rifle that I just crossed over there, unfortunately. Right here, I try to jump off and kill this guy with a nice headshot. Don't have enough shots on him to actually clean him up. Right here, I just make some questionable plays because I'm succumbing to how normal players play free-for-all. I am initiating direct contact with other players in the game. And that's really not what you want to be doing. You want to find players who are being shot at, like I'm doing here. I immediately off the spawn, I hear two players firing to my right, I immediately turn, and I'm going to get a nice double kill right here. Again, just looking for the people who are already in a fight and cleaning them up. Firing at the guy who's the weakest, if you can find the guy who's the weakest first and getting the kill. I'm not sure why I chase this guy. I end up I do end up killing him. 
but he throws a noob nade, and this is, again, noob sticks or noob nades are nades that are thrown right as you die because the player already knows they're going to be killed. Right here, I pull off my bolt shot, not sure where they are. The grenade and the uh, indicators on your radar, while they are good at showing where players are on the radar, they're not good necessarily at showing whether they're above or below you. But as you can see on my radar, there's a little arrow below that little red dot. That means he's below me. And again, the same thing for if someone's on, on top of you. A little arrow appears above the red dot. But right here, I patiently wait for this guy. A lot of players would not do this. I know that I've been crouching most of this time, so I know that while he may think I'm up here, I bet he's just regenerating his shield. And sure enough, he comes right up the lift. He was just re sitting there regenerating his shield, which is smart. He wasn't just camping there. He didn't even know that I was there, to be honest. Right here, I make a pretty good escape. He almost gets me. I lift straight up. Notice my shield bar and how much damage this shot actually does to me. Nothing. Okay? A lot of people don't understand that the railgun can be used at an insanely close range. And it still does almost no damage to you. End up getting a really nice headshot here, pulling out the same jump maneuver that I failed at previously to get a headshot. But there I had enough, or the enemy player had enough shots on him. I lift up Magic Tree here. So that's Magic Tree, lifting up Magic Tree. Now, that whole thought process, why didn't I lift up here? Because there's a guy above me. Because he knows that I'm going to come out right here. It's incredibly predictable position to be in. He knows he could nade me. He could bolt shot me. Who knows, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up a side lift. And sure enough, enemy players start converging on this guy's location. As you can see, the guy jumps over here. And so most likely, there's going to be some weak people for me to clean up. And here I see two players below me. Do not end up landing that sniper shot. Very unfortunate. I do get end up getting that kill, but the guy lifts up and is able to clean me up. If I had landed that sniper shot, I might have done that there. Poor decision making on my part right here. I don't recognize who has the sticky debt, and I should have backed up. I should not have gone here, and I should not have gone any farther than I am right now. I should not have gone farther and then backed up. Because I heard him with Sticky Debt, and sure enough, there he is. And all he does is turn and get an easy double kill right here. I should have stayed back so that his Sticky Debt stuck the ground here and didn't actually kill me. But instead, I press forward, which is a bad maneuver. You always, when you see multiple dots on your radar, want to hang back and see if any fights are going on and then initiate contact from there. Specifically using the sounds to determine who's in a battle and who's not. Don't empty that back kill. That's a good example of recovering from a few bad shots on the battle rifle. You can recover your fights. I end up getting completely melted here. What I should have done is push back further into Purple Forest. The reason why I got melted there is because the guys who I killed previously know where I am and immediately look there. So I shouldn't have pushed out as far. Again, this guy misses me with a bolt shot completely. He missed another pretty easy bolt shot on me in the purple forest. Not sure what he's doing using the bolt shot, period. Now, as I say that, I miss a bolt shot over this guy's shoulder. I'm slowing this down because it looks, when it's played fast, like I actually got him. I end up punching him and punching him again to trade. Not very good use of the bolt shot here. On my part, I was flinging the bolt shot previously to get some of those other bolt shot kills. You want to be very slow and steady with your bolt shot, moving into those charge shot kills, not actually whipping your reticle. Guys, if this helped you understand how to play Abandon Free For All a little bit more, if you like these videos and me slowing down the gameplay and giving you some insight into what I'm thinking, please like the video, subscribe, put a comment. Say what you'd like in the next video, what gameplay or map you'd like to see, and I'll see you on whatever I make next. Peace, guys.